So today I'm going to show you how to make these um, old style number plates. This is for a German Fermat uh, motorcycle, uh, the KS Zundap KS600, this one's going on. Um, so the, obviously back in the day they would have been uh, hand um, enameled. Someone would have sat there with um, you know, a long brush and literally drawn them out. But uh, you can try that if you want, but it's really difficult to do. So this is going to, uh, I'm going to show you the easier way to do this. Um, it's a bit of a cheat. But uh, as you can see, it's pretty effective. Um, it's one side, and there's the other. These, of course, go on the front mudguard of um, Fermat motorcycles. Next thing to do is give the number plate a quick sand. Don't want it looking too new. So much anything gives the paint a bit of a key, but it also will um, it'll help the paint soak into the scratches a little bit and give you a bit of. Uh, texture and different density of paint and things. So there we go. So a good scratch of that. And then next thing we're going to do is mix up some uh, different coloured paints, different shades of um, kind of you're trying to create off-whites, yellows, those kind of things, browns and all that kind of stuff. So uh, mix up a few of those. I'll do that in just a second. So I've mixed up a few paints here. You can see the colour shades. You don't want to go too strong with this. So you, you literally want about 90% white and um, a little bit of a rusty type colour or mustardy type colour and then just give it a quick dab on here you have to be accurate, it's a good thing about this, it's real easy that's it finished, great isn't it? as if right, um, so just leave that for a little bit Leave that for just a few minutes to dry off slightly. Let's the some of the water evaporate and the paint just thicken slightly. Right, so now it's dried slightly. You can see the dry patches appearing. We're just going to wipe it off, just spread it around a bit. There you go. Don't know if you can see that well in the light, but if I flip it over, hopefully you can see it's quite bright white that side. It's already got a nice yellow tinge. So we're going to leave that now for about um, 10 minutes or so, just to dry off. And then we'll give it another coat. We'll do, we'll do this a few times and we'll slowly build up a kind of shade. And that way you won't see the obvious lines, but you'll see as if all the paint has um, faded or the UV's got to it or, and the oils have risen, because obviously that's probably what would have caused uh, the yellowing along with other mud staining and stuff over the years. So we did that a few times. So I'm, to, I'm on to my second coat there, and um, notice that the paint is really watery, so you want it very washy, so it kind of flows evenly over it. So as it, um, the advantage of doing that is obviously if you use thick paint, you'll see brush strokes and things like that, which would just look fake. So in, in this method, you will create uh, essentially a watery film over it, and as that water evaporates, depending on how thick the watery paint wash is, it will evaporate randomly, leaving random deposits of paint behind as well, which makes it look, uh, will make it look much more authentic. So we're now three coats in. Um, here I've got a little wet flat sponge. And you can see where um, I've put the wet coat on, it still looks a bit brush liney. So you can use a wet sponge just to randomize the effect. So there you can see, it looks better than just your brushes. So just give that a quick dabbing. Let that dry. So I brought back in the white sheet for a minute and then you can see how much, um, how different it looks already. So that's gonna form the base. You can obviously um, make it as dark or light depending on how old you want it to look and things like that. So next we're gonna do is gonna add some kind of rust textures and not too much though, because you've got to put the letters on and you don't want those going on an uneven surface particularly. And obviously the letters would have been on there originally so the rust would have occurred on top of the lettering as well. So we don't want um, too much rust in the background, but I'll do that now. So when applying the rust effect, 
um, <clears throat> use a nice dry brush like this with a bristly end and use neat um, paint. I'm using a dark brown acrylic. These are water-based acrylics, in case you're wondering. And bring this in. And then, not too wet, of course, just give it a light dabbing and think about where the rust would actually occur. It obviously occurs where there's most water um, penetration or stone chips and things like that. So generally around the edges where it wouldn't dry out as quickly as perhaps the middle. And the more exposed to a corner, there'd usually be more rust in the corners. And then it would become progressively lighter as you uh, came into the number plane. So just go along and give it a nice little edge. Like this. Have a few random splodges here and there. Just feather them out quite neatly. Yeah, big damn shame. Yeah. Obviously, do both sides. So here comes the bit you've all been waiting for, how you turn these rubbishy looking printouts, although quite accurately cut, into hand painted, clearly defined lined letters. And of course the cheat is, we've got some matte enamel here, we don't particularly want gloss unless you're trying to do a, a, new, a newer looking number plate. Um, so I've got some matte enamel paint here, a bit more traditional. And then all we need to do, because these are obviously cutouts. It's best just to hold them down with a screwdriver or something. There we go, like this. And then just give them a nice good daubing of paint. Like so. Slide him out of the way. Wheel in the next one easy as that and of course by doing this you then get some nice clearly defined hand painted lines the enamel being that bit thicker and oily or whatever it's made of comes out of treats there we go just slap that on the more kind of brush strokey hand painted the better really because then it looks like you've actually done it for real and then of course you can see that you just slide them out of the way and they're perfectly defined hand painted letters so we're gonna do that for a whole lot, and then uh, then we're gonna glue them on. You might wanna give them two, a couple of coats. I wouldn't give them more than that because you want them quite thin. Um, you can adjust it. The first coat will soak into the paper, and then so then give it one more coat at least on top, I would say. But don't go over the top of it because you don't want to cure extra chunky letters. And then we'll come around sticking them on in a minute. Right, there we all are. No one can't ever say I didn't hand paint them because I have. And uh, we'll let them dry and we'll give them one more coat, and then we'll um, lay them all up. We've got the two coats of paint on the letters. I'll show you them up close. There you go. So even though they're matte, they do actually, because the paint just gets splodged on quite thick, they do come out for looking very like hand painted letters. Um, we don't like so we don't want them too thick so that they uh, they bend easy. Right, next thing to do is just line them up. Do do. Right, here we go. Just roughly. All we want here is just um, to figure out the rough layout. Right, the number of this bike is going to be five, two, zero, nine hundred. Like so. Yeah, you can see already it's starting to look like a grand job. Uh, so the next thing is a bit of PVA glue on the back of them and stick them down. So what I like to do is put things down as markers. So rather than draw on the actual workpiece, um, I'm going to line that there. So that's in line with that one. And then this piece here will be roughly the line of the first character. And that one, the end of that character. 
and stuff like that. That way um, you can just see roughly where it's going to go when you go to put the glue on or you can just put a small pencil mark or something like that if you wish to. Right, so we do that now. I'll go and get some glue and stick them on. Just stick them down roughly and slide them around afterwards. Before you push them down, get a bit of tissue. Just dab the little fellas down. Yeah. And glue the edges again if you want to afterwards. Yeah, so you just follow that along, plonk them on. I'll do the rest for a second. Right, there we go, they're all stuck down. So you can. Just give them a little bit of a dab here and there. And glue underneath as they're drying. You can slide them around a bit for a while. Just to make sure they're lined up. Just um just take note of the easy way to do this, take note of the distance at the bottom. And then the distance at the top, just make it all roughly parallel. If you may as well get it as perfect as we can. There we go. And so that's one side. Hold up so you can see it properly looking pretty good so far um, so now we'll we'll come back in a second and we'll just um, age them a little bit more because at the moment they look a bit shiny and new but we'll just add to the authenticity of them and you can see uh, I don't try and show you on the little camera they actually look raised you see that as if they have been hand painted thanks to this very thin piece of paper we used and um, and a couple of coats of uh, matte enamel. Right, there we go. So I'll uh, just get some paint ready now. Right, so I've got some more paint here. This time we're gonna do um, a few browns and mustards and things. Now, um, with rust, um, when it's first formed, the iron oxide, it's very orange, and then it goes brown, and then old rust eventually turns into a, a magnetite type affair, which gets darker. So we need a little bit of a mixture of both. So I've got a little bit of um, an orangey musty colour and a little bit of brown. Just mix the two on a brush, not too wet though. Just have a little dab in the corners. Um, have a think about where the rust would occur. So probably around where the screws might be. To hold it on. Things like that. Around the edge of the lettering maybe. Keep the brush nice and dry and you can spread it out a bit. Don't worry about the black. Go over the edges a little bit. A few random dabs here and there. I'm going to go over some of the lighter areas and up in the corners. Go over the letters a bit, just to dull them off. We can wipe some of this off afterwards if you don't like it. You really want small amounts of paint and quite dry. Try not to think of any patterns, it's actually quite difficult for a human because you tend to uh, do some kind of pattern whether you know it or not. So now I've just applied a little bit of orange to it, some dabbing out, getting okay, mixed with the brown. So we're here, look, a little bit of dab of brown, then onto the tissue, then back onto the orange. Just random splodges. You just build this up if you want, to uh, depending on how you want it to look. Yeah, that's probably about right. And then we've got one more trick coming up. 
Okay, and uh, up next we've got real rust. I'll show you that. There you go. Nice bit of iron oxide. And the easiest way to make this, really, really simple, is just to get some um, steel wool, uh, soak in warm water for about 20 minutes, and then put in a tub. And it, it literally doesn't look like it rusts that much. It does rust on the surface, but then when you squeeze it, it just literally turns into proper, um, nice shades of um, rust there. So I've dabbed it, dabbed the brush in the uh, PVA glue there, and then I'm just having a little jab around. This will now give some proper um, texture to it. There you go, a little bit of glue, a little bit of a jab. A little bit of glue. And the good thing about this, you see, is it will actually wear off leaving a more realistic and sort of three-dimensional look to it. We should plonk up on those. A bit more orange. So you can literally just mix the colours around um, until you've got the look you want. Jab on there. The rust. Just literally randomise whatever you want. And you can rub this off again, it's not too difficult if you don't want it or you think you've done too much or something. There you go, just wipe those off a bit. A little bit more in the middle. <coughs> that's, that's it really. I'll um, just really hold it up for you. Uh, what I would say is I'd now leave that to dry for a day. And I'll show you the, you can see the rust on there. In three dimensions so a proper plate and then once it's dry give it a quick blast over with um, PVA or something there you go, look at that it's yours for a thousand pounds nice original 1942 so um, I just put a little bit more um, I was just thinking about it and I've just added a little bit more rust around the outside of it a bit more orange as you can see so that's one side and uh, there's the other side there you go It's actually quite effective um, and like I said I'd give it a little bit of a matte varnish or something over the top just to bond it all together and protect it and um, you can of course put the uh, Voffen stamp on there if you want to I've got one but I'm not going to put it on here because I know what some people are like on YouTube start sending me stupid messages and things like that uh, but I'll have that on later and that is it the uh, have a look at the website if you want the, the URLs in the description